Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Sonic Generations. In the last episode, we collected all the red rings of the Dreamcast era, and today's episode we're doing another Challenge Gate episode of the Dreamcast era here. Uh, the first one that I did here is here in Speed Highway. This is one of the character um, challenges of the dream of this uh, stage here. We are racing Cream the Rabbit in this this uh, challenge. We have to collect. 11 of these chow creatures, these little blue creatures. We have to collect 11 of them and beat Cream. Now she's collecting chow too, so make sure that you collect all of them before she does. <laughs> this is a really hard challenge. I'm gonna say that right now. This is a really hard challenge the first time playing, so you might lose a couple of times, but there you go, now that we've beaten that and she only had 10. I actually had to retry that stage a couple times. Now the second one here in Speed Highway, uh, it's another doppelganger race. Uh, pretty much just beat the doppelganger, race through stage and beat the doppelganger. I'm not really going to go into the detail about this because, well, we've already done that already. We've already pretty much gone over the doppelganger races and everything. So there you go. Now the third one here in Speed Highway is Beware of the Speed cop speeders. Uh, pretty much this is another uh, bad Nick style challenge. Pretty much there's a bunch of these cop guys and you can use these guys as platforms. They're like This kind of helps you platform and get onto the right platform and everything. Just bounce on their heads to get to the next area. That's pretty much what the stage entitles. As you guys can see I'm doing that. And there you go. Now we completed that challenge. That one's not too hard. That one's not too hard at all. So now on to the next Moto Bug style thing. I say Moto Bug because I had Moto Bug right there. This is pretty much another one of these pot filled challenges. But the thing is, though, he's not spitting out rings. He's spitting out bombs, and we'll in from here on out he will be spitting out bombs. So I mean, he'll we'll have another ring style challenges, but he'll be starting to spit out these bombs, and these bombs suck. They, they, like, really kind of hinder your progress, but I didn't manage to get an S rank with one second to spare, too. That was really ridiculous. But, after we do that, we've only needed to clear four with Classic Sonic, so now we've kind of restored a little bit of Speed Highway here. So now on to Modern Sonic here. The first one in Speed Highway is a Drift Challenge. This one... I like this one. This one's kind of interesting. It's a little interesting concept. You have a lot of these sharp turns, and you are pretty much you are pretty much told that you guys need to drift in this challenge. Well, the title of the challenge kind of gave it away. You're just drifting all over the place. And honestly, I really like this challenge because it's really like... It's an easy challenge, and there's no way to really fail except, you know, not making it in time. But if you don't make it in time, then there's you, you're really taking your time. <laughs> But that one's pretty easy. I like that one. That one's fun, too. Now, on to the next character one. We are It's Espio, Master of Camouflage. We are fighting... We are, like, racing Espio while fighting him. He's gonna turn invisible, and the only way we can uh, advance forward with these blue, like, light area areas is to shine light on where Espio is. It's pretty easy to tell where Espio is. But if you shine the shirt's light on him, you can reveal him and you can attack him. And then you can c continue going on, onwards, to the next area. So, like, right here, as soon as I get past there, it, the doors lock. And then I shine the light on him and there you go. That one's pretty fun. I like that one. And plus, it kind of shows what SBO is. A chameleon. <laughs> now on to the next one. This is one of the... Uh, this one's called Drill Baby Drill. I think they kind of got the idea from this with uh, something from Sonic Colors, which is a drill wisp. But I'll get into that whenever we get into the modern era. Now, for this for this challenge here, after you do this little segment right here where you're running down the building, you are going as far down as you can. You are pretty much drill, drill, drill all the way down. Um, best suggestion I can do is to pretty much know which... Uh, boxes have the little spike balls there but you just keep pushing circle when you jump to do stomp move and you just keep going as fast as you can 
this one takes a while, and for some reason my control was kind of ugh here. <laughs> I was like, wait, there's the gold ring. But there you go. Now you completed that one. Now on to the next one. This is another doppelganger race. I'm not really going to go into the detail of this. You just race, race doppelganger Sonic to the end of the stage. And that's pretty much that in a nutshell. I mean, it's good speedrunning tactics. I actually like these doppelganger races as much as I don't have really much to say about them. I really enjoy them because they give me a chance to kind of like redeem myself if I uh, mess up in the recordings earlier. Now this one, this is I kind of mentioned earlier. We have another one of these ring basket guys. Now, what we have to do is we have to collect a certain number of rings from this ring basket guy to the end of the stage. The thing is, is different about this one compared to the one in uh, Chemical Plant Zone. Or, no, it wasn't Chemical Plant Zone. The, the one in the Genesis era. He actually spits out bombs, too. So, he'll, and along with uh, spitting out these rings, you have to be careful whenever he spits out a bomb. Because when he spits out a bomb, you lose your rings. So, that's not a good thing. This, it kind of makes it a little bit difficult. In a way, I actually had to retry this stage a couple times because he kept doing that and I kept messing up and I couldn't, didn't have enough rings at the end. But after that, we would have completely 100% in Speed Highway. So now it's fully restored. And now we are going on to City Escape. Uh, this is uh, Act 1 si Challenges of City Escape. The first one here is a Boardmaster Challenge where Sonic is riding a skateboard. Pretty much, you have to ride the skateboard throughout the entire stage. Um, if you mess up and you lose your skateboard, don't worry. There's going to be a bunch of these uh, skateboard monitors all over the place where you can get them. So it's really... F I like this one. This one's one of my favorites. I like the I like the fact that Sonic's dr uh, riding on a skateboard. I like this one a lot. It's fun. But, yeah, there's really nothing much to say about that. And be careful of these saw blades. There was a numerous, amou numerous amount of them during the challenge, so be careful of that. So there you go. We completed that challenge. And now, going on to the next monitor challenge. This one is a return of a certain type of elemental shield. The Thunder Shield. This one was from Sonic 3. Uh, pretty much what the Thunder Shield does is it attracts rings near you. It and also gives you a double jump. And not only that, it'll protect you from electricity. So that's a pretty nifty little power-up. So once you beat this one, you will get this skill in this item in the skill shop. So you can go and unlock it and put it in stages and classics in classic Sonic stages. I like Thunder Shield. Thunder Shield's one of my favorites. I actually like the Elemental Shields. But uh, the next one here is Rouge the Bombarder. This is a, another character one. This one. Rouge is racing us to the end here, but while she's doing it, she's dropping these bombs. And as you can see, she dropped one right in, at the beginning, right in my face. So be careful of this. Uh, you can kind of see what her bombs look like. They have the gigantic heart on them. They're re this one's kind of really simple, but it's also really difficult, too, if you're not really, like, keeping an eye out for things here. Like, right here, you have to actually kind of do a little platforming without taking damage. And then I smack her right at the end when I when I get over to the the goalpost here. Now this one, this is one, this is another doppelganger race. Um, I actually kind of really do good on this one. I mean, actually, no, I didn't actually. I, there was one part that actually kind of screwed up my run because I kept dying at a certain part. I don't know why, but it looks like I'm doing really good at the beginning, right? And then come at the very end here, I'm already at a B rank. And then the truck comes over, and I didn't have enough time. I, it just barely turned into a C rank right at the end. I completely forgot what caused that. Anyways, we're going on to the next one. This one is a really interesting one. I actually kind of like this one, too. This one is a spring-based challenge. There are springs all over the place, and you have to kind of just, like, navigate yourself through this, like, bombardment of springs and make sure that the springs don't you know jettison you into a certain way that you don't want to go <laughs> but at the end of the stage here you use this spring up here and then there's a goal sign there you go but well, that one's kind of interesting I like that one 
But after that, we've completed half of uh, the challenges in City Escape. So there we go. Now on to Modern Sonic here. We are taking on our first one. This one is Cream Helping Hand. This is another character-based challenge. Cream, the rabbit, is actually helping us this time. We aren't racing her. Pretty much the gimmick of this challenge is you only get one ring the entire challenge. And there's a bunch of obstacles that make you lose these rings. The thing is, though, if you call if you call uh, Cream, her chow will give you a ring. So you get five chances to get rings. So you have a grand total of six rings you can have the entire entire time. I would suggest doing it whenever you lose a ring. You push triangle whenever you lose the ring. So there you go. That one's pretty easy, and I like that one. Now on to this one. This one's called Dash Ring One Two Three. This is an interesting one. Pretty much the gimmick of this one is you have to complete the stage by going through at least 35, 35 uh, orange rings here. You have to go through 35 of them by the end of the stage. That one's kind of interesting because it kind of makes you really kind of go for these rings up here. I really like it. I, I really like the creativity of these challenges. They really do. They really are really creative. Now on to the next one here. This one's Topsy Turvy. Pretty much we're using the gimmick of Cityscape of the horizontal bars and the gigantic spinning wheels. Um, gigantic spinning wheels we haven't seen much of, but they're in a couple of these challenges. The main gimmick of these of this challenge is we have to use these horizontal bar horizontal bars to propel ourselves forward and hit the hit them at the right moment when the blue area there. But as soon as we get that, there you go. Completed that challenge. Now on to this one. This is another Bad Nick style challenge. This one's High Speed Hijinks 2. Pretty much like in Sky Sanctuary, this all the enemies are going super fast. So you have to be careful because they will fire on you a lot faster than normal. A lot of these gun robots here were like super slow at firing at you. They will actually kind of like really hit you really fast if you're not careful at all. So at the end here, you kind of see this. Like he shot me right there. I was like, well, that was no indication he was going to shoot. And then I hit the spikes. There you go. Completed that challenge. And then now, after that, we have completed City Escape. City Escape is now 100% done. We've gotten all the red rings. We've gotten. We've completed all the challenges. We're all good to go with City Escape. Now on to Seaside Hill Classic. This one is another high, <laughs> super, super speed hijinks one. This is one uh, where all the enemies are going really fast, and you're going really slow because you're in the water. So it's really a kind of an unfair advantage. As you as you can see, I could bar I barely made it killing that egg pawn. So. Not only the not only are the enemies going super fast, but the but the uh, platforms are really going fast too. So you have to be mindful of that. That's another thing you have to be mindful of. So there we go, and then we completed that one. And then on to the second one. This is an interesting one. I like this one because I implement a the the main concept of Sonic here. We are fleeing the animals out of these capsules here. You have to complete a bunch, you have to, uh, at the end of every stage in Sonic 1, 2, 3, that I can think of, you had to free a bunch of animals from capsules. They, they applied this concept in this challenge here. I actually kind of like this one because you have to free a certain number of animals, because every capsule has 14 animals, so you have to hit a certain number of capsules in order to beat the challenge. So you have to have like 140 animals by the end of the stage. That one's interesting, I like that one. And then on to this challenge. This one's another doppelganger race. I think... Was, I don't know if it was this one. I think it might have been the modern one. I, I think we'll, we'll see it whenever I did it. I, I just finished editing this and I couldn't... I can't even remember what I did. I, oh, I got an A rank. That's right. I, I did three minutes on this one. This one wasn't that bad of a run. But there you go. And now on to this one. This one's interesting. This is another character... A character challenge here where you're you we are using Espio the chameleon to 
pretty much make us go swing from certain points. We have to do a swinging mo motion. You have to hold the triangle button on those. You can't just hit them like I tried to. I, I thought you just had to, to hit it. No, you have to hold it. You have to actually hold the triangle button in order to do the swinging. As you can see, this is what I'm talking about. You hold the triangle to kind of propel yourself and grapple onto these points here. And then just make yourself go a little bit farther with the swinging motion right here. This one's really hard if you're not really good at, at stuff like that. And there you go. Now we've completed that one. And with that, we have completed half of Seaside Hill. <laughs> we are almost done with the Dreamcast era, folks. And there we go. Now moving on to the modern Sonic here. The first challenge in Seaside Hill is Rouge the Temptus. This one is really kind of interesting. Because I never had something like this. Pretty much we're using Rouge's charm to charm these robots in order to attack them. And progress further because we have to defeat a certain number of uh, egg pawns in order to to uh, unlock new areas via the little blue villain area there. Pretty much these egg pawns have shields, and if you try homing attacking, you can't do it. They have to be stunned with stunned by the love of Rouge in order to be able to attack. That one's kind of an interesting challenge. I like that one, but it's. I like the really the creativity they put in these challenges. Now this one's another doppelganger race. Now this one is the one the run I'm really good at because how many times I, I screwed up in the actual like run of the stage of Seaside Hill when I was recording it. This one's a really good run, and I think it's mostly thanks to it because I I really researched the the pathways you could take in Seaside Hill. But at the end there, as you can see. I shaved off at least three minutes of my run on, in the recording. So there we go. And I got the S rank too. That's one thing that I'm really happy about. And it's because I took the upper path. I took the upper path with uh, where you had to, where you got the red ring. The really hard red ring of Seaside Hill. So that one took it. That one was really good and I was really proud of this one. Now this one. This one sucks. I don't like this one. You have to... Uh, Keep boosting on this wa boosting on this water, or the gigantic uh, fish from Green Hill Act Two <laughs> will come and chomp you. This one is kind of an interesting challenge, but it's really hard. You have to keep boosting on this water, and sometimes you have to do little drifts, and that kind of makes you go outside the bu buoys and make the little gigantic fish want to chomp you. And it's really, really difficult, and if you don't have enough boost power and you lose it all, you are screwed because you'll start running on the water, then you'll fall in the water. As you saw, you saw the gigantic fish come up behind me. That's because I was outside the buoys. When you go outside the buoys, the gigantic fish wants to eat you. Now we're doing a Surf Sea and Sand. Now, this one... This one's kind of, like, the first time I did this, I was like, oh my god, this one was hard. But when I came back to it, I, it, was, it really wasn't that bad. Pretty much, you're doing a lot of, uh, you're, you're jumping and doing a lot of uh, platforming. Because there's a lot of obstacles that are in your way, like spikes, fire, stuff like that. And you have to do a little platforming while you uh, uh, humming attack these balloons. Not only that, you, there's a cart segment at the end here. And there's a bunch of stuff that'll get in your way if you're not careful. I really don't know what to think of this challenge. This challenge really is eh to me. <laughs> now, the last one is Trick Island. I like this one. This one is fun. Pretty much, you have to... For the gimmick of this, this challenge, you have to do a certain number of tricks in the rainbow rings or the jump platforms. You have to do a certain number, like I think... As it says 35 at the top there. You have to do 35 by the end of the stage. And you will see how big your boost booze meter gets by doing all these tricks. Because you're constantly doing tricks for this challenge. Look how big the boost meter is getting. Because you're doing this. Folks, that's what a 300% boost meter looks like when you have the skill equipped. <laughs> that one's really, really... I like that one. I, and I will replay it as many times as I want to. Now that we've done that, we have completely 100%ed Seaside Hill, thus completing everything in the Dreamcast era. 
So now we can move on to the next era. So we will move on to the modern era. But I'm going to be saving that for the next episode. So in the next episode of Let's Play Sonic Generations, we are heading into the modern era and taking on the first stage here. This crumbled looking city. I'll see you guys in the next episode.